so here we're given essentially different uh, characteristics and we're asked to determine which one could possibly be a steroid. So in regards to part B, we essentially have a glycerol molecule with three fatty acid chains, which has a structure similar to this typically, where you have some type of esterification occurring. So in regards to this, this is the typical example for a triacylglycerol, which is mainly named for having three different acyl groups acylated to essentially the glycerol molecule. And this is not a typical classification for a steroid. These are typically classified as triacylglycerols. So this isn't correct. In our other part, we have two fatty acid chains and a phosphate group. So once again, we have some sort of glycerol molecule, but in this case, we have a phosphate group attached as one of our essentially isolated groups. And once again, we have the same thing for parts one and two here. And mainly this is the general form of a phospholipid, which is not a steroid either. And in part D for our answer choice, we have essentially the presence of two fused six carbon rings. So there's a bit of unclarity to which specific compound that can be, but that's still not correct for the definition of a steroid. The definition of a steroid is given by part A, where you have four fused different rings, which is the general basis structure for all steroids. And mainly uh, part A is our final answer in this case, which gives that a steroid has four fused hydrocarbon rings. And for steroids, there are usually many different uh, groups that can be attached to these four fused rings. And this is our final answer.